So this is a cold one with Corey and Carlisle. And if you don't know already, this is simply a free form conversation recording session where Carlisle and I, we sit down, we have a six pack of beer and we talk about things that happened the previous week before. Now, these are more like audio podcasts, which means that they're longer than our video reviews and they're also unedited. So if you're offended by the foul language, you might not want to listen. But if you aren't, then sit back, hang out with us and we hope you enjoy. Thanks. Live from the Spill Studios, located behind a liquor store off the I-35 Interchange, it's time once again for a couple of cold ones with Corey and Carlisle. Man, when you just going to change it to behind the crack house because off, of, we, off of MLK Drive? Because you're not located behind a crack house. Am I lying that you're located behind a liquor store? But it is the best liquor store here in Austin. It is, I, but I'm not lying, am I? That but was liquor, not a lie. It's the convenience store that sells beer. They have wine tasting there. It's very cultured. You make it sound like I'm behind like the place where wine owners walk out with brown bags and shit you're you're behind the place where hippies go to get blasted <laughs> Ask for that. that is true it's it's hipsterville for alcoholics yeah, because they don't just sell it's not like it's a place that sells schlitz and and you know corona even though you can get that you can get schlitz and corona no it sells it sells beers for the finer beer drinkers it's yeah it's beer for the guy with the ironic facial hair and mustache and t-shirt yeah so. this is the place that cyrus drives across town to buy beer from <laughs> when there's like a place right across the street he just right. he just sounds better i'm coming out of the whip in anyway see now everybody. i didn't say what it was called oh whip in is the best place in town though to go for a convenience store if you're gonna go and buy beer and come out and try to sound cultured when you do it it really is i want to give them a shout because they're always nice to me because no, apparently i drink a lot too they're 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 a great store but that doesn't you know, stop the fact that you're located behind a liquor store off the I-35. <laughs> and it's funny because I'm always over there. As a matter of fact, there's a little guy named Malcolm there who's always nice to me. Hey, Corey, how you doing? Getting fucked up again? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, so, sir. Already there, just getting more fucked up. So how you doing, man? We're doing this early today. We're doing this really early because uh, yeah. we had a whole big recording session today. We recorded a whole bunch of this week's uh, reviews and next yeah, week's yeah. reviews even. So, uh, yeah, no, uh Decided, hey, let's do it a little early. Let's let's get it out of the way so that we can have other things go on in the in the <laughs> sordid late night evening. Exactly. So we're having a couple of cold waters right now because it was Halloween weekend. We drink. I'll drink. Oh, uh, what do you? Yeah, like because I didn't drink at the several parties I went to this weekend. I, I don't like to cast that shadow on people. I'd rather you admit that you. I think we I, both got fucked up this weekend, my friend. Oh yeah, yeah. So I just decided to take it easy. Shit. And then we we both suffered in the early morning wake up on uh, going, to All <laughs> going to see Madagascar. Going to see Madagascar. Too. Why did they do that, man? They because know, they, know they are people. rotten. Back, because they didn't think any grown critic adults would actually show up to it anyway. I mean, even kids are having a candy hangover. That's I mean, fair. it's like it, it, everybody's just messed up trying to go see some goddamn talking lion. That was the nice thing, though. Did you notice how sedate those kids were? Like, they'd had a rough <laughs> night. They just kind of, man, I shouldn't have had those last caramels. <laughs> oh. oh. Except for the kids that are sitting there farting and shit, you know, because they ate too much the night before. But anyway, that's besides the point. We're here to talk about the top five, first of all, and whatever happens after that happens. That's right. Whatever happens, happens, my beautiful friend. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you just had nothing else to say, did you? No, <laughs> no. You said the phrase, whatever happens, happens. And that's kind of what you tell that girl that you're dating that, you know, hey, baby, just come hey, over hey, to my baby. place and we'll, we'll just take it slow. And then whatever happens, happens. Uh, this is going to be that kind of party. Maybe we should be drinking. I thought it was going to be that kind of party. I would have stuck my dick in the mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, so let's get and, uh, started. To with the top, top five. five, brought to you by Spill. All right, let's go into number five. Number five. <sighs> Something I know nothing about, The Haunting of Mar Mo Molly Hartley. The Is Haunting of Molly Hartley? Yeah, did they even five. Did that even open here? Uh, I don't know. I didn't hear word one about this around here. Well, we definitely did not have a screening. We That's definitely sure. didn't have a screening. I'm pretty sure it opened up here. I mean, it was showing the trailer here all the time. Oh, uh, I didn't see the trailer at all. Yeah, movie made six million dollars. That's not a lot at all. That's, no, but that but it's not as low as some of the other movies in recent weeks, especially big movies. So that's not that for a film that you would, I, I had never even heard of. That's not too bad. I mean, it's uh, it sounds like it's a movie that should open on on Halloween. From freestyle releasing, so <laughs> that's his quality. That's why. That's, it's yeah. a, a true independent. Yeah. So uh, let's go on to number four. <sighs> number four, Angelina Jolie movie, The Changeling. Oh, oh, not The Changeling, Changeling. 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 The Changeling is an awesome 1980 George C. Scott film I talked about last week. Yeah. Changeling is a piece of shit. Uh, you know, now, 
Now I wasn't I, crazy about. I don't know if I'd say a piece of shit. You weren't I able would. to record. With I you. I wasn't there for recording, but I strongly did not like this movie. I was very disappointed. I thought it was it took a lot of great stuff and just muddled it up and got it all wrong. Clint Eastwood movie too. Yeah, not all Clint Eastwood movies are good though. No, I mean no, you look not. at Flags of Our Fathers and try to explain that. Compared are to in Sam the Garden of Good and Evil. Oh, Midnight no, in the Garden mouth. of Good and Evil. Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil is a great movie. I didn't like that one. Oh, I love that. But I, I'm I'm a big Clint Eastwood fan. Never yeah, saw too. the never saw Flags of Our Fathers. But yeah, this movie I was I was really high on this movie. First of all, it made nine point four million dollars this weekend. So for, which is about nine million dollars too much. Actually, I guess it made about ten point one million after it was all done. But it's that you know what that's uh that's not. That's not really good for a Clint Eastwood movie combined with Angelina Jolie. Yeah. Obviously, they put this out hoping that it would garner some Oscar talk. I was really high on this film when I walked out of it. And I and the complaints that I had about it, saying that it was just too modeling, too melodramatic. And I thought, like, man, you know what? I'm really being, being too easy on this film And by the time it was over with. And I thought people were going to be giving us great reviews. I was nervous about going back and recanting my review. But a lot no. of people have come down on it. No, it's a it's a it's a lame film. I mean, it's uh, the best way to describe it. It's kind of like watching torture porn without the torture. I mean, it quite literally is watching Angelina Jolie get the crap beat out of her by the system for an hour and a half before things start turning around, and then she's not even responsible for pulling herself out. Just people come in and kind of pull her out of the terrible well, situation. She's kind of helpless in those situations. She well, that was that. that but time, that's the maybe. point: is that it's it's just watching a helpless person of mediocre intelligence because the character wasn't a smart character just getting the crap kicked out of her throughout the movie. It was just rough, and it, it never pays off properly. See, I, I thought uh, Clint Eastwood, man, he's a good director. He, I mean, I thought that there were moments where his brilliance as a director came through. I thought there were some good performances in the movie. I, I like watching it. I didn't hate it, but I definitely didn't think it was a great film that they're trying to make it be. I mean, that shit is heavy. You know, Clint Eastwood was like, you kill a kid in this movie? Oh, that's a guaranteed Oscar right there. No, nah, yeah, I don't think so. It was, uh, it was, it was pretty weak. I, I, the further I get away from it, the more I hated it. The, when I walked out, I was kind of like, oh, that wasn't really a good damn, movie. I hated it. And now I'm, I'm to the point to where, like, dude, I never want to see a frame of that movie again. That movie just. Now, see, I gotta agree with you on that. I can't, I don't want to watch this again either. I mean, it's, it, for one thing, it is rough to watch. I mean, it's depressing. And then when you yeah. watch it knowing that they made it that depressing and you get the feeling that they did it just because heavy films like this, they get Oscars. I mean, I'm thinking, there's nothing here for me, really. The true story is a fascinating story, and, and it was one that should have been told. He just put the focus far too heavily on the first he half of the He got a lot movie. of stuff right I, from what I looked up. I mean, No, he got a lot of stuff right, but he also changed a lot of stuff. And the stuff that he changed was some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, and then he, he trumped up the death toll to, to make it sexier in the film. But <laughs> it, uh, well, no, because when you say, oh, he's responsible for killing five, maybe six kids, that's kind of like, oh, that's pretty bad. But the movie's like uh, killing 20 different kids. It's like, oh, my know, God. You think it, they made his fucking chicken coop look like Auschwitz. You know yeah, I mean? no, <laughs> he's trying to. So it, 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 I think the story could have made a great film. I think they just took they, they took the wrong angles and accentuated the wrong things and made a movie that was just it was really kind of boring and it was really it just kind of meandered along for a while just waiting for shit to happen. Yeah, no, I, you're right. It's it's a slow movie too, uh, it, it, which is I'm kind of sad because I like the writer Michael J. Straczynski in that. Yeah. yeah, he's all right. He's he's one of those overrated comic book writers. Who, That's what I'm saying. I like to see a comic book writer expand and go into drama. I wish well, but he he, he started him. out in TV and moved into comic books. Yeah, and it wasn't you know he did Babylon Five, which I always felt was something of an overrated. Uh, uh, sci and science he was fiction also, show. And it worries me because he was the one that was writing the script for World War Z. And I was like, I hope he does a good job. Well, you know, genre stuff he, he tends to do fairly well with. And World War Z is... I'm really curious to see how that turns out as a film because... That shit ever gets made. Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is it's not a filmable book. I mean, it's a that's what I kept saying. It's a documentary. Uh, they would have to make it as a documentary. But why? It was so good as a book. I mean, I could I could see that. But... And by the time it comes out, the zombie craze. I mean, we're sick of zombie movies now. Is Zombies it really gonna... will never die. No, literally. They, no, they they'll come back later. But people are just kind of sick of them now. Well, unless they can get this right, we'll have something different that we can do here, and that'll be the one that people will say, "Wow, they never did this with a zombie movie." If they can get it right. But let's continue on and Speaking bring us of, round to number three. Speaking of horrible things, Saw Five. Saw V. That's right, Saw V. Electric Boogaloo. Uh, $10 million. Uh, cumulative gross right now is 
$8 million. Man, those movies make money. Yeah, that's weird. That when, when, But when you look at that, when you're like, oh, hey, it's $45 million. It made $30 million its opening weekend. Yeah. $10 million its second weekend. That means over the course of five days in between, it made like a million dollars a day at best. Yeah. I mean, well, I have to think. Halloween weekend, people just they're not going out looking at movies that much. I mean, people are well, out and hanging out. And well, no, on the weekend, no. Yeah. But uh, so, but yeah, I, and that's why they put this movie out a week early because people are like saying, "Well, why don't they put it out on Halloween when Halloween's on a weekend?" Don't you, know, you don't expect too much business, so. No, if it were the thing is, is if it's on a Sunday, that's when you do it. If Halloween is on a Sunday, yeah, you put yeah. it out on Friday night because then Friday and Saturday people like ramped up for the Halloween. Yeah, and they're like, oh, because you. you there are some parties, but hey, let's go see a scary movie. But when Halloween is on Friday night, there ain't much Halloween partying on All Saints Day. <laughs> no, no, hell no. Unless you like us and going to see Madagascar. But so Madagascar yeah. two, <laughs> which brings us around to number two. Zach and Miriam make a porno. Oh, I'm so happy to see that this did well. Well, I mean, it well, did, I mean, it did it, it did number two on this weekend, and that's ten point uh, seven million dollars, not gangbusters, but no, but but his movies never do gangbusters, and I'm not and I'm not saying this because you like the movie. I wasn't crazy about it. I thought it was kind of funny, but not crazy about it at all. So but, you thought it was a number two then? Yeah, big stinky number two, and I mean, I I look, I, yeah, I your your brain, I I I could see you stutter there because in your brain you went to the number two scene in Zach man, and Oh, Mary, I did. That's it. Because I make a joke about this, I'm like, nah, leave it alone, man. I, I don't even. Yeah, want no, because I saw you shit. thinking it because I was thinking it too. Because that that's the scene that this movie's going to be remembered for. The evacuation <laughs> scene is going to. Oh my it's God. just going to kill from from here on out. It's going to be. Is that the movie where? Yeah, it's that's yeah, the movie. Yeah, it's that one. Now in the movie, people, I need, should I spoil it for people? I mean, it's already out. I mean, there's no. a scene where that some that they're having. Uh, uh, kids, I feel bad for you, but listen to this. They're having he one guy's have having you, he's he having uh, he's having butt sex with a girl, and uh, and the girl ends up taking a crap all over some guy's face, and I was like, oh my, oh my god! Uh, See, now we we saw that before we saw um, uh, Sex Drive. <laughs> <laughs> so so when she said, "Oh, do you want a rolling black brown out?" It's like, "Whoa, whoa! I already saw that movie. I already yeah. saw that movie." You know what? It's funny because Cyrus said the same thing. We were yeah. so afraid that we were going to see that twice, and like, "No, no, please, God, no!" And yeah, I, I look, I, I'm waiting for that Kevin Smith movie where I he's not repeating a lot of the things that he does. I want to, I want to clear something up with people. I tell you what, let's go ahead and just talk about this after we get through the top five because this will be something I can address and you can like latch on to. Well, okay. Well, I will say that I really enjoyed this movie quite a bit. I, I wasn't here for the review, so I really dug the hell out of this well, film. Well, tell you what, let's talk, since you weren't here, let's talk about it after we uh, do the top Okay, five. well, yeah. yeah, but so I, I, that's number two, which brings us to the number <laughs> one movie. Beverly Hills Chihuahua. No, High School no. Musical 3, senior year. Big surprise. A uh, big drop-off for this one, too. Uh, made $15 million this weekend, up to $61 million. Uh, million. I mean, so that's not too bad. I mean, that's... For a movie that started out, I mean, it's for a made-for-TV movie, movie yeah. that makes no goddamn sense whatsoever. <laughs> I think that's an incredible cue. So people far. loving it, people loving it. So whatever. I think that it, I, I sense a trend happening where this is going to be so cheesy. Have the cheese factor there that twenty-somethings are going to start watching these and doing sing-alongs with them. Yeah, well, no, what's going to happen is it's going to take about five, ten years, but it's going to be like Newsies. It's going to be that thing that in college, everyone's going <laughs> to, that one one girl is going to be talking to another girl and go, you know what I really still love? High School and the Musical. Oh, my God, I love that, too. Except, Holy crap. Hey, let's go rent it and watch it. We don't have to rent it. I have it in, uh, under my cupboard. Except these have, like, the big corporate push behind it. Their success is Newsies. Everybody's like, is that the movie that Batman was in and he was singing a long time ago? That Christian Bell was in that, yeah. right? Newsies was a musical about the news guys from the the newsies from the thirties. That was a that was a Disney movie that just flopped at the time, yeah, but it tanked. It, but it has it ha, it has that secret following among a certain age group of girls, um, and I think that's going to be the what you're gonna what you've got right now is you've got a lot of people. I know it's a lot of people on our site want to hate those movies and they really want to hate them, and I know some of them doth protest too much. <laughs> uh, the the I, I hate those, I hate those, and they're yeah, they're right. they're really watching them. But um, like Kent, uh, who actually admits <laughs> to loving the films. I mean, he really does. He he did not stop talking about that while he was here. So um, yeah, so it's a. Uh, 
I, I think that's going to develop that kind of following where it's going to be that that whole like almost like what Greece was uh, yeah, exactly. to a certain age group to yeah. where I think I think in 20 years when all of these actors you know aren't doing anything anymore maybe one of them will be and won't come back but they'll have a high school the musical reunion you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, high think, school, the reunion musical, and it's it'll it will that you know, would be sad, man. If they did that, but they're gonna. All the, all the, they're that. gonna come on. We went back to Mayberry, didn't we? And you know, we and that went, was a TV that and, was a TV movie, and that, and that didn't even do too well. Well, yeah, but this was a TV movie too. See, I, I, man, I totally disagree with you on that. They're always going to find a way to keep that franchise going by having new kids in them. Nobody wants to no, see no, no, they old will. But I'm telling you, like 10, 15, 20 years down the road, they're going to revisit this. For that age, at a convention somewhere, the they're going to be in a Marriott hotel somewhere. <laughs> I'm t- no, I'm. You, you know what, dude, you're, you're wrong on this. I'm telling you, they're going to do it. They've got to do it. They, that's how Disney does these things. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't want to see that. I would love to see these old motherfuckers. Frankly, come back I'm, do I'm surprised I, we haven't seen uh, Saved by the Bell 20th reunion. <laughs> don't even say that. Don't don't tempt people to do this shit. I don't need to see Screech anymore. After he made that fucking porno, which I did not see, by the way. I'll just make that clear. <laughs> see, you bring that up. It's like, I didn't see the porno. I, and why, why are I you so people, offended yeah. by it? Because <laughs> yeah. it's Screech in a porno. The whole concept makes me upset. So let's go ahead and get into uh, what we were just talking about. Zach and Mary make a porno. So you, I, I knew you liked the movie. I mean, Yeah, I love the hell out of the movie. I'm a big Kevin Smith fan, though. So I, I'm part of that core audience that sees all of his films in a theater and always have. I even saw Jersey Girl in a the theater, for Christ's sake. Well, I think we all have seen all his movies in a the theater. Well, you, we... you guys have because, you know, you've gone to review them. But, yeah. you know, it, I've actually paid at times to go and see his movies. So uh... Now, see, it's fans like you who have gotten pissed at me. And actually, all of us for, on our review. Well, only Cyrus and I saw this. Besides you, and on there we were talking about how we didn't like it. Leon made fun of uh, Kevin Smith being fat because the whole story about him breaking a to- uh, the toilet just came out. So all these people are like you're just talking about this guy because you have something personal against him and you hate him. And I just want to let people know I have nothing against Kevin Smith personally at all. I, I think he's great in person. He's a I've seen him speak. Mm-hmm. And he is the most entertaining guy to sit down and listen to. But you and you and Cyrus were the wrong guys to review that movie because you guys don't like his films that much. You'll 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 like Cyrus just a few minutes ago. He was over here and he's like, no, 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 no. I like his first three movies a lot. And it's like, well, yeah, but you stopped liking his movies ten years ago. You haven't liked anything he's well, done. Well, the reason since. why is because he's kind of done the same thing. Is the whole thing of why I complain about Guy Ritchie. I mean, Guy Ritchie. He's making the same movie pretty much over and over again with a different face. And I look Kevin at, Smith is doing that too. Kevin Smith is is the Woody Allen for geeks. You know, he's he's that he's doing that same kind of comedy over and over again. Uh all of his movies have the same kind of themes and deal with the same See, kind of humor. I would argue with you on that because Woody Allen, the reason why I like Woody Allen so much is because Woody Allen will go out and tackle different genres. He does not do the same thing over and over again. Even some of his comedies have different. You compare a recent comedy that he's done with some of his wacky stuff like Bananas or Take the Money and Run. I mean, he's done different types of comedies. But Kevin the humor Smith is, is doing all the same. The same. If, it was, if it wasn't, I wouldn't. Even though he's doing different genres, the jokes are the same. That's no, why I don't no, like his not. movies. Uh, like I said, then, uh, then Sleeper wh- and Take the Money Runs, not the same thing as uh, then, then how as, I- as this recent film. What was it? Uh, uh, one where uh, uh, Barcelona, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah and, and it, that was two great movies, two comedies, two different stylings. Completely. Except that I don't like any of them because every time I watch it, I feel like – see, this is the thing is that you don't understand in the comparison. I'm not saying Woody Allen and uh, and Kevin Smith are on par with how great of directors they are. That's for everyone else to debate. I'm saying that they make for uh, their comedies for a specific audience that love them and love the nuance of the different things they do. You look at it and talk about, oh, well, they're different genres and they're different this and they're different that. And I look at it and go, no, they're all the fucking same and none of them are funny. What, Woody watched, Allen's movies? Yeah. No, I've, they're not. They're, Woody they Allen's, are not the same. No, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, Woody Allen's movies, they don't make me laugh. And uh, it's because they, they all feel the same to me. To you, now to me, when you say it's the same joke over and over again, no, Kevin Smith's movies are all very different. They tackle different themes. They're about different stages in Kevin Smith's life. They're very autobiographical to a certain extent about whatever's going on in his life. And he's made movies about that and each one feels 
feels different see, and the jokes <laughs> are different, but I can see why you think they're all the I same. Just, you chose, I'm going to tell you, you chose the wrong director to no, compare Kevin Smith to. No. You compare something like Match Point to. Uh, uh, to uh, uh, something like one of his comedies. No, I mean, no, no, they're, they're no, no, not, no. You now you look at you can look at so many different Woody Allen movies and see how they're different. Now, some of them are the same. He's remade movies pretty much. He's cast people as him in movies, but he's also been able to tackle so many different subjects, so many different genres, j- movies within the same genre, and they're all different. But but, but Kevin you Smith, either love Woody Allen movies or you don't. They're, I don't love. He well, does no, that's not, not true. He does I don't love not, every movie he does. No, 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 no. But what I'm saying is, people who don't love Woody Allen movies don't end up liking hardly any, if any of his movies. Whereas Woody Allen fans, you know, much like, you know, I don't love all of, of Kevin Smith's movies. I, I love a few of them and I like a lot of them. And there's one or two that I'm, I'm not a fan of at all, but, um, that's not to, you know, that's how you are with Woody Allen. Now, granted, Kevin Smith's been making movies for, what, 14 years, while Woody Allen's been making films for well, almost I'm gonna 40 defend, years. I'm going to defend a point, a small part of your point here. I mean, Woody Allen has pretty much made the same movie. Like I said, Match Point is pretty much crimes and misdemeanors in a way, uh, just trumped up with a younger cast uh, and at a different time. Now, I look at Kevin Smith's movies. Every Kevin Smith movie almost has a, a, a Star Wars reference to it. All of it is pretty much the same kind of juvenile humor. Uh, a lot of it is kind of the same. I mean, he, when I, the same kind of gross out humor that he does, which I'm thinking, okay, now that was kind of funny in one thing. But and and how does that differ from, uh, from Woody Allen's dry uh, humor that comes from the source of dysfunction? I mean, all because of his jokes all sound of them the same. I like that. Like I said, some of his comedy. No, no, see, I, I see where you're coming from, and I see where you're trying to defend it. You're just not realizing that that that's how I feel about Kevin Smith's movies. I just acknowledge that it's only for a certain audience that his humor strikes a certain audience that loves it and wants to see that over and over again. Just like Woody Allen's humor works best for, uh, for other folks. Well, like I said, I don't, I, Oh, wait a minute. Uh, that, that, is that the co-host box knocking right there? Wait, hey, wait, co-host. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on. Let me pull you out the box before you say something. What? Yeah, what, 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 wait a minute, who, I, I had you recharging, what's going on with you, man? I thought we were recording, I, yeah. I, I thought we were going to record our show, what's uh, going no, on you, here? You early, man. Am I? Do what I time this, is it? Do I have, this, I have you set on a timer or something, what's going on with you? Oh, wait, 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 I know what it is, you set the timer yesterday, didn't you? You forgot <laughs> to put his clock back in out. <laughs> okay, that's what uh, you Ah, you son <laughs> of a bitch, Corey! <laughs> To be sleeping right now. He, yeah, he thought he thought he was gonna, you know, be. Uh, he, he's up and he's like, "Oh my god, I'm late, I'm late," and it's like, "Oh shit, it's an hour ahead." Yeah, god damn it, I terrific. To, All right, okay. well, what, what are you, you what are you guys yeah, talking about? Then, well, nothing. Pretty All much. Right. We're talking uh, about Woody Allen and Kevin Smith. Hey, look, I would. You made a point, and I agree with you. Kevin Smith makes. I would I would stick to my points, and he makes sort of the same kind of movie. The one movie he tried that kind of differently with, and I think kind of it kind of didn't work was Jersey Girl. And everybody says Jersey Girl is not that good of a movie. Even he makes he makes jokes about that. Yeah, it's not that good of a movie. And I think that he tackled sort of drama better. This is why I say I like Chasing Amy. He was able to tackle that better in something like Chasing Amy, and it worked. I don't know why Chasing it worked. Chasing Amy is his best film. It, it it sure is. But after that, he kind of kept making the movie for, like you say, the fans. Now I'm on the argument that. I wish somebody of his talent would make something a little different and quit feeding into what his fans want. But at the same time, he has a fan base. If that's what those people want, then that's what, that's what they're going to get. If he repeats the same thing over and over again, then no, I'm not going to like it because I was never a fan of it in the beginning. Zach and Mary make a porno isn't much different. It's not going to win over anybody who <clears throat> doesn't already love Kevin Smith. But if you're a big Kevin Smith fan, if you're the type of guy that owns or most or all of his movies, this one's going to be for you, and you're going to find it funny as hell like I did. This guy over here trying to compare Kevin Smith to Woody Allen. Can you get this? I'm just starting shit now. What? Now, see, <laughs> yeah, see, he's starting shit now. What I said. Now, are we, now, are we talking about Woody Allen from like the 70s, early 80s, or the Woody Allen of today? We're talking about his career as a whole. We're, what we're talking about mm. is we're talking – no, we're talking about the fact that <clears throat> Kevin Smith <clears> – <throat> Sorry. Mm-hmm. Kevin Smith makes movies for a specific audience, and there's a specific audience that loves his movies and gets them, and everybody else looks at them and says, oh, that's just like his last movie. And that's how Woody Allen is, mm-hmm. where Woody Allen's fans love his movies and just love the fact that he keeps cranking them out, and the rest of everybody goes, oh, he's, he's just making the same movie over and over. Well, I can't really say that uh, 